He's the main man, the bow, the master frag, the last Zarnian, Mr. Machete, and Scourge of the Cosmos, to name a few. Here's your look at the Mattel DC Multiverse Collect and Connect Lobo. This interstellar mercenary comes to us from one of the newer lines of DC Multiverse and only took four figures to put together. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure. Figure out how tall Lobo stands. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, he's not big. Or at least he doesn't look big, but the tape measure tells us the figure stands at 7.7 7 inches high. So he's actually taller, and I'll do some size comparisons, of course. A little bit taller than the other figures that we had a look at so far. And in centimeters, yelling the crowd, the centimeter height on this guy, you're looking at 17.9, about 18 centimeters tall. So here's just a couple of size comparisons. We'll put them against the Man of Steel. Lobo is, in theory, taller. And I guess proportionately, he's a good scale to Superman. Although, again, he's just, he does feel a little small. I say feel, he visually looks a little small. Comparing him next to Kyle Rayner. Again, he's a little bit towering over Kyle Rayner. Here he is next to Kid Flash. Sort of bringing out the entire wave, aren't we? And then last but certainly not least, my favorite figure from this wave, here he is with Batman Beyond. You can kind of see his growing stature when you compare him against like smaller size, smaller build figures like Batman Beyond and Kid Flash. But still, I can't help but feel maybe the biggest problem is I'm comparing it in my mind to the DC Universe Lobo, which was such a large figure. By contrast to that, this Lobo does seem a little on the smaller side. Of course, you should probably already know his accessories by now. We did the full reviews on all the four figures. He comes with this very long metal chain. Yes, it is Virginia Santa Claus. A metal chain that connects one side to the hook, as you can see right there. This will fit into his hand rather snugly. I like that it's got a jagged nature to it, so it doesn't look like it's a very clean and new, recently discovered knife. It looks like he's probably been using it for a fair bit. Uh, the chain then connects off to a, a weighted bearing there on the other end, which again has a, little, a few little cracks and stuff in it. I just love, again, like the fact that we get a real chain. I guess I don't really know what the other solution to the problem would have been. It's not like they could have given us a plastic. I guess they could have just chinsed out and just wrapped the arm in a sculpted chain and then just given us the hook. That would have been probably the cheapest, lamest way to incorporate the same idea. But I'm, do, I'm happy the fact that they do include this chain, which as you probably saw in the beginning of this review here, you can take the chain. This will take some time. Commit not necessarily the afternoon to do this, but a few minutes or so to wrap the chain around his arm. You don't have to be as exact. I mean, you know, just kind of a, have it overlapping itself and then you would fit the hook into his hand. Now, it's one of those cases where, again, you're gonna to have to pry the fingers away from the palm to get him to properly hold the hook. And it's natural that some of the chain will drape down as a result. It sort of just adds to it as well. The chain probably could have been a little bit shorter, but I'm not gonna certainly nitpick the fact that we get a real metal chain. It's not something that you would normally expect to get for a figure like this. It's so good, in fact, I'm going to just keep that on him for the time being. I'll also show you the alternate head sculpt that he came included with as well. Now, if I put the two side by side, it's entirely your prerogative. But in all honesty, I do like this head sculpt a little bit more. The goggles are good. I like the goggles, but I like the sneering look on his face instead. It just screams more Lobo to me. I also like the fact he's got the hair coming down from the front, which is a soft plastic the only downside, though, as you already had seen in a previous video, I think it was the Batman Beyond video, uh, his head, I don't know what's going on here. There, Maybe there wasn't enough glue that they didn't firmly glue the head down in place. I saw it from a distance, and I thought, he looks like he's got a receding hairline. That can't be the case. And then upon closer inspection, yeah, you can see there's this big gap where his face stops, and then that should be where the hair starts. But no, that's that's not the case. Sorry, Virginia, that's that's not the case. So I may actually just take a little bit of glue. Press, 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 and uh, hopefully presto change your change -o, that should be all fixed. So that may only be on my figure, but I do feel the need to mention that to you. The head sculpt actually is rather good. 
I like this kind of off bluish skin tone that they've given him. They've also airbrushed some areas around his muscles. So it's not just one color. As a result, areas like his bicep, his tricep, his shoulder, and of course his forearm kind of stand out in some of the areas where it's slightly lighter, contrasting that to the airbrushing that they've done for the rest of the arm. So I like that. Uh, there is his chest, which again, if you wanted to take the vest off, ideally you could. I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily attached to anything um, as you can see, there's the back of it right there. You could just take it completely right off. I think it loses something uh, to not have it on him, but if that's the option that you want to go with, nothing can stop what you want to do. It's your collection. Do whatever you'd like. As we move further down, maybe this is where my biggest problems come with this figure. I mean, he does scream Masters of the Universe, because I think he's using a Masters of the Universe buck body, basically like the initial body mold. Looks like it's a Masters body, complete also with the legs. Now they granted could have sculpted the fabric uh, on the legs over top of the existing mold, but like proportionately, it sort of has that squat look to it, which I don't think you notice it as much. Let me just once again bring another figure into the mix here if we put it again next to Terry McGinnis I mean proportionately his torso is the same as Terry's but Terry just because he's got skinnier legs and because he's got a smaller torso it seems like he his proportions are more accurate I think the biggest culprit is just it seems like his thighs go right into his knees right into well that's that's human anatomy but it does seem like his legs are a little on the squat smaller side and really maybe it's just the optical illusion of it all um, as we look at the figure though i really did like and still continue to like the paint that they put into the legs here the sculpted in skulls were a nice touch additionally to that the skulls the uh, stars that they painted above the skulls uh, it looks like they pla well there's the plastic right there as, a, as an indicator to you likely just taking that black plastic and such a tried and true simple approach really just dry brushing silver over top of it you get the outer surface of silver and then you get all like the little recessed areas still remain that darker color it's very effective and like again like i said it's one of the easiest tricks of the trade when it comes to painting figures you get this kind of two-tone effect where they blend in with one another and it's not as it's as simply a case of just dry brushing the silver over top of that uh, the boots look good. Um, there's not really a whole lot of paint to be said for uh, this part, like the pants area. Uh, the part that is rubbery, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to kind of get in there with a screwdriver. Do I have one over here? I'm just checking my little trinkets here. I always, as you know, I keep like a little a nail clip, uh, you know, nail filing nail. What am I? What's the word I'm looking for? Like a filing kit. I'm just going to take this tool. Just unfold, there we go, unfold the leg. It will be going without saying as well that as you are moving the leg, you may find you do this probably a couple more times. Um, the figure was actually fine before, but then just moving the legs back and forth, it ended up starting to uh, kind of tuck in that rubbery lower torso. I guess they did it to conceal the joint. I mean, it does finish it, other than the fact that you see these little kind of square gaps right here. But the downside, though, to it is the, the this material does get snagged a lot. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's posability. Now, even though I'm still on the fence proportionally with the way this guy's stature is, um, you know, again, proportionally, that moving that aside, the figure does have still all the retained posability that all the other... Uh, you know the all the other multiverse figures that we've looked at still had so his head rocks back and forth which is actually something that the other figures didn't really have but this one does rock back and forth head hinges up and down you can rotate the head all the way around i feel like that would be a song somewhere uh, the upper torso <laughs> pops right off the upper torso let me just let me just grab that how embarrassing i was going to say one of the problems with it that's another issue with this figure is his ab crunch now you'll see hold on one second yes as i was saying you'll see one of the biggest problems with this figure it's popping off way too frequently is this peg that attaches to his torso it doesn't also help that this joint right here this ab crunch i can't even get to bend 
I may probably just go around to heating this up so I can s just soften it enough that I can start bending the joint. But to just do it on its own, if you're having the same problem with this torso, the crunch in the torso not being able to bend, as you're bending it, this is gonna pop off. And if you have had this figure, this figure in your collection, let me know if you have also the same problems, this torso just popping off way too frequently. Normally when you snap that in place and you get that satisfying snap sound, it usually means that this is going to stay in place no matter what wear and tear you then do to the figure. But again, just, just the slightest bend, well you've already seen it a handful of times now, slightest bend forward that the torso pops off way too, way too easily. Legs hinge outward, you have the forward and the back on the legs, a only single bend on the knee, no swivel on the lower leg, so the calf doesn't actually move back and forth. The feet do, they hinge up and down. Uh, they rock, well, they don't rock slightly back and forth. There's really very little posability happening right there. So there is Lobo. Um, a figure I truly did want to like. I think I'm sort of in the positives, because we of course have to look at the positives and the negatives. The positives would be the coloring. The coloring I think is really where this guy does things well. This very light kind of ice blue coloring tone that they put to his skin really complements the figure well. The red also popping on his face. Really a lot of the color is really what this figure shines with. I think what my problems with when it comes to this figure, still, again maybe I'm just living in the past. But the DC Universe version of Lobo, even though unfortunately I did sell him years ago, I think was a superior looking figure. At least you felt like you were getting more for your money. And with these multiverse figures, a lot of it is hit or miss. As big of a figure as we've gotten with like a clay face, we get a figure that I feel could have been a lot bigger here with Lobo. Hit proportionately, and again here we go talking the the P word, proportionally, I just feel like he's really, really squat. I mean, again, if you compare it to all the other figures, Lobo is taller, so I'll give him props for that. But there's something to be said for using the Masters of the Universe body. It just so happens for Lobo, I don't feel like it works as well. His legs should have been a lot longer. When you've been collecting figures as long as I have, often at times I'll find myself catching what I'm saying feeling as if I'm possibly living in the past. And the past was certainly a glorious time to be collecting bath figures, those were the Marvel Legends, and the Collected Connect for the DC variety. I don't think we'll ever come to a that golden age of collecting Build-A-Figures, the stature of Galactus, Apocalypse, and Sentinel, or even in the DC Universe frame, the ones like Kilowog, Chemo, and Despero. We'll never really get figures that size anymore. Now sort of what we're relegated to is these smaller figures that really in theory could be packaged on their own and sold for the same price point as the other figures that we've been collecting to build the very same figure. I know we did get ourselves the Clayface, which for the most part was a pretty good looking Collect and Connect figure, but I still would never trade in my DC Superheroes Clayface in favor of that one. It's still my all time favorite. So Lobo sort of falls into that category of, for him being put together as, I really want to use this term very loosely, a free figure, because really you're building him from free pieces that come included with other figures. Some would argue the point that you're really only in, often at times collecting these waves to get said build a figure. So he's not really necessarily free, but for its size, again, this guy could have easily been packaged on his own. I really wish he could have been bigger than what he is. To his credit, as I want to give as much credit and praise to this guy as I possibly can, his coloring is really what benefits the figure the most. The head sculpt is really good, and I like the inclusion of the hook and chain, but again, I wish this guy was a little bit taller. Am I living in the past? Maybe I need to move on from that, and maybe I really just need to embrace the fact that this is the sort of collect and connect figures that we're going to be getting nowadays. Now I think Lex Luthor, even though he's not a figure, a wave that I've been able to successfully pick up yet, I think Lex Luthor proportionately is a little bit bigger than Lobo. Hopefully when we eventually have a look at those figures, I might be able to do a comparison. So again, I like this Lobo. Don't get me wrong, I hopefully in the last 10, 15, 25 minutes that this review has been going on for, I hopefully I've been conveying the idea that I really like the Lobo, 
I just wish he didn't look so squat and maybe get away from using a Masters of the Universe body. I think instead they should have given us a much taller looking Lobo. He scales well to the other figures from this wave, but truthfully, Lobo should have really been a lot taller. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the last five videos, counting this one, of course, as we've had a look at the Lobo Collect and Connect wave from DC Multiverse. If you guys are into this sort of thing and want to maybe ask yourself the question, does this guy do more of this sort of stuff, feel free to go back and have a look at my other multiverse figure reviews. I've done a whole bunch of them, and the biggest problem for me as a reviewer is often at times I can't find these things in local retail stores and toy stores, so I'm usually relegated to picking them up online, and of course there's always the nightmare then of the converting of the U United States dollars to Canadian dollars, which is always terrible, and then the brokerage and the shipping and stuff all on top of that. I think the Lex Luthor set was split into two. The only few sellers I've seen on eBay that have it currently have split it into, because I think it's an eight figure wave, have split it into two sets of four and each of the sets are over $100. So once that factors into conversion, shipping and brokerage, probably each one of those sets are gonna be coming close to about $170 to $180. So unfortunately, picking these up in, in local retail would be the smarter bet, as I certainly would be doing more of these as they were coming out. And that's the, one of the big reasonings why as well. I don't do as much Marvel Legends stuff either. Local retail just is a nightmare when it comes to finding a lot of this stuff and paying the exorbitant prices on eBay and other online markets can be very detracting for wanting to have a look and review more of these on a more frequent basis. But let me know if you would like to see more multiverse and maybe Marvel Legends figure reviews down below. And certainly, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.